Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to share a card that was so much fun to make, and I think you're going to enjoy it too. We're going to use a couple stamp sets from Quetzal Craft. First, we have the Slay stamp set, which is an exclusive stamp set from our sponsor, TopFlightStamps.com. And then we also have the Quetzal Craft Cats stamp set, which is one of my favorites. I'm starting off with a piece of watercolor paper cut down to four by six. This is the Aqua Bee watercolor paper. It comes in six by nine sheets in packs of 50 for about uh, $15 on Amazon. I really enjoy it for uh, watercolor painting and also stamping because it's smooth enough to be able to stamp pretty accurately. Um, when I'm stamping this Christmas tree portion, I'm stamping it up in the corner on the, um, the left hand side because I want it to kind of disappear off the edge of the card. That's how this stamp was designed. I'm stamping on a newsprint pad. You can buy those at the dollar store. They're meant for kids to sketch on, but it's really great as a, a work surface protector and um, a, gives you just a little bit of a squish when you're stamping. So I had a nice leftover piece of that watercolor paper when I trimmed it down and I'm just going to stamp the cat on this because I want to pop him up to give the card a little bit of easy dimension. Now I'm going to use some watercolors to color my elements here and um, don't worry if you don't have every design element you need for a card you can always freehand a little bit in even if you don't have a lot of drawing skills and I'm going to show you that in a minute. So to color the cat I'm simply wetting him first with some clear water from a water brush. Water brushes are so convenient if you're doing card making and you don't want to risk tipping over a bucket of water on your um, on your work surface. They're so convenient to use a little set of watercolors. I started off with a golden yellow ochre color and put that on the tail and the back thinking that's more of your, your you know highlight areas of the cat and then I picked up some brown which is kind of warm like a burnt sienna brown and I added that to give it a little bit of warmth and depth on the um, kind of shaded areas of the cat, like what would be behind the tail and the edges of the body, behind the head. And then I put in some darker brown, kind of like a burnt umber on the spots. Now I didn't let everything dry. I didn't worry about crisp edges. I knew for a fluffy soft cat, I wanted those colors to blend. So that's why I made sure he was wet before I painted it. And then I knew my colors would blend together. Now remember, watercolor only goes where the paper is wet. So it's a very easy way to control where your paint's going to go and also achieve blending. So for the tree, I did a couple shades of green uh, to give it a little dimension. And then for the presents, I did some red. And while I was at it, I did the ornaments red. And then I used a little bit of like a golden yellow for the bow and the present and the lights on the candles. I colored my little mouse with gray and pink watercolor and um, just kind of blotted off some excess there. Now, I knew I wanted to have like a window with some snow outside, but I didn't have a stamp that would do that. So I decided I would do a little um, drawing in with a ruler. So first I thought I wanted to have a division between the floor and the wall. And I thought like a strip of baseboard molding would be a good element to add and it would give it a very homey feeling. So all you need to do for baseboard is just to do two parallel lines. I prefer to have a clear ruler when I'm doing stuff like this on a card because it helps if I can see through and um, look at the whole scene as I'm sketching. Don't worry about it being perfect. If you've got a line that's a little bit crooked, it's not going to matter. A lot of these hand-drawn rubber stamps will have imperfections or more like a whimsical look. I don't wanna say imperfections because it's just kind of like a whimsical look. So if your lines are a little crooked or a little shaky, it's not gonna matter. It's gonna look like it's matching the character of the stamp, which I think is a really nice look. And then I did double lines on the window too, just so it looked like it had some molding around it. And it made it a little more interesting than just a rectangle floating around in the uh, in the wall there. And then I thought it would be really cute to have a mouse hole in the baseboard because when that cat wakes up, that mouse is going to need a place to escape. Now, a really fun technique I like to do with watercolor um, is a snow technique with salt. And this is really easy to do and all you need is regular old table salt from your kitchen. First, you need to make sure that the area that you want your snow to be in is really has a dark, wet paint. So you really wanna make sure that your window looks nice and glossy after you've painted it in with blue. I used ultramarine blue and some indigo there to get it nice and dark. And then I just sprinkled in the salt and I let it dry. While that's drying, you can paint other elements in your scene, such as the rug, 
which I decided to make kind of like a uh, light aqua, kind of mid aqua color. And I used the indigo color from the window to add some shadow under my tree and under my mouse. Try to repeat the colors as much as you can when you're using watercolor in your card making. That will make your um, card look a little more professional because everything's gonna go match and harmonize with one another. Now I'm drawing at this point because I can't paste, paint the molding and the baseboard if the surrounding areas are wet because if the surrounding areas are wet, we know that watercolor likes to go where the water is. So if I did that when it was wet, my brown would just go everywhere and it would make a mess of my card. So now that the background's dry, I can easily go in and paint the molding and it will stay nice and crisp. While the baseboard was drying, I decided to cut out the cat that I stamped on the other piece of watercolor paper. And I am cutting really close to the edges because I don't wanna have a white line. That's why I didn't cut around the whiskers because I thought I would end up with some white sparkle that really would detract from the scene since everything else except for the candlesticks are, um, are colored in. And I kinda just played with the placement here before I decided to adhere it. And then I used some foam squares to pop him up off the page. I thought it would give it some nice dimension bring him out in front of the mouse where he's kind of sleeping with one eye open, keeping an eye on that guy, and I thought it would be really cute, and then I just pressed him in place. I decided I wanted to have a little more detail on the Christmas tree, and I just took a Sharpie and just kind of drew in some scribbly branches, kind of like um, the stamp head on them, and that just kind of carried that design off to the corner of the uh, painting. Then I used a dry tissue to wipe off any, um, any of the salt in the window there. Just make sure whatever you use to wipe it off is dry so you don't end up smearing anything accidentally. And then I picked out some red pattern paper that I thought would look really nice because it was really rich looking. And um, I realized the card needed a little bit of a border that that stamped panel needed a little bit of division between that and the red pattern paper. So I simply took my ink pad and I inked the edges. Um, to get a nice crisp black line, just make sure you don't rock that ink pad too much. But if you get a smudge, don't worry about it. Make the card, send the card. You are gonna bring joy even if there's a smudge, so don't be too picky. And then I centered up that four by six panel on a four and a half by six and a half inch red piece of damask pattern paper. And now I'm going to center that up onto a five by seven cream card base. I like to make my own card bases because I find ones that I buy pre-made are kind of flimsy. And what I like to use for my cardstock is the 110 pound or 120 pound, the really heavy weight cardstock you can get at the big box, box craft stores. Um, I've picked some up at Joann's and at Michael's that work really well. Um, I'm sure there are other stores that carry them. Those are just the only two that I've used personally. And there you have it. It's a nice sturdy card that I think would bring some cheer to anyone's holiday time of year. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out our sponsor, topflightstamps.com. I'll have the stamps that I used linked down below along with the watercolors and other supplies. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Until next time, happy crafting.